So 2020 has been kind of a weird year for smartphones. Uh, of course, we have the obvious stuff that's going on with the world that has caused a lot of different things to shift and move in the smartphone world as well as the rest of the world, of course. At first glance, it seems like most of the phones that are coming out are sort of incremental updates to the phones that came before them. By and large, that's true, but there are just a few that stand out from the rest in terms of being phones that I really think are worth picking up this year, at least up to this point. So I'm gonna go through this whole list, my most favorite, biggest pick of all, the one that I think is the best that we've had in 2020 so far, will come near the end of the video, so stick around for that, and we'll just, you know, it'll be fun. Phone number one. This might be a little bit of a surprise to people. It might be a little bit of a surprise to some people that this company makes phones at all, uh, but they do. And this is their first year, TCL. So this is the TCL 10L. Now they have another phone, the TCL 10 Pro, but I chose the TCL 10L for a couple of different reasons. And I hope that you know you guys will you OCD people will forgive me, but I do have to handle the phones in order to show them. I'm doing my best to not make them have, uh, you know, all kinds of fingerprints on them. But be that as it may, it is what it is. This has Face ID that works better than the Face ID on some other Android phones that are much, much more expensive. The 10 Pro is sort of their, well, kind of their flagship. They have a 5G phone coming out this year as well, but the 10L is I guess what you would call their budget phone. The 10L is $250. And when I received this phone and then I realized, and then I was told that it was $250, like if I didn't know that it was $250, it has a very light skin on it from TCL that does a few different things than stock Android does. But uh, overall, it is a very clean phone, very clean design, very easy to use. Not too much bloatware comes on it. Uh, you just get you, you get a nice solid phone. 665 in it, I believe. Uh, the kit has four camera lenses on the back. It takes pretty decent pictures uh, for a for a two hundred dollar phone. It takes amazing pictures, but it's got fingerprint reader on the back as well as the Face ID that I mentioned before. And this is one of those phones where you're like, if this is two hundred fifty dollars and I get all this stuff for it. Why would I pay, you know, $1,300, $1,400, $2,000? Well, it's a good question. Uh, and the TCL makes a very good argument for not doing that. The TCL 10L is a great phone. The, the next phone that I want to talk about is the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. Now, as many people commented in the video that I made about this phone, I didn't want to like it because it uh, retails for... <laughs> $1,300, which is a lot of money for a phone. And I originally bought the Galaxy Note 20, which is the so somewhat dumbed down version of this uh, that's $1,000. And that too is a good phone, but not worth $1,000. This, it's arguable whether or not it's worth $1,300. I just looked today and right now on Amazon, it's actually $1,099. So that's a much better price for this phone. It's almost a bargain for this phone. This is like the Cadillac of phones this year. It's got this really nice frosted back that doesn't show fingerprints very well, and that's a good thing. It has this giant camera hump, uh, but the pictures that it takes uh, are on par with the best phones out there. 8K video has a lot of special features that you can only do on a phone that's probably in this price range. Uh, and of course it has the S Pen, which is a feature that I've always loved and a feature that I would not, well, without that feature, I wouldn't buy the Note. Uh, and that would be a sad world. I like the squared off design. I like the slightly flatter edges, so there's not uh, false touches as much as has been on some other Samsung phones. It's just a solid slab of phone. And, and the thing about the Note phones is they're, they're supposed to be just beastly. Uh, and and do all the things that you would possibly ever want them to do. And this phone will do that. It doesn't have a headphone jack. They took that away last year, and I'm trying to get over it. But the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra is probably, up to this point in 2020, the only phone 
I would say is worth considering for over $1,000 for the, for, for the most people. I, the Galaxy Fold 2 just came out and that's a $2,000 phone and nerds are gonna buy that phone because they're nerds and they want that phone and that's fine. But for the average person, the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra is probably the best, like, you know, super feature rich, uh, you know, luxury car of a phone <laughs> that you can get so far in 2020. Although I, I still hate this mystic bronze color. I don't, people get mad at me for hating the color. It's not, it's not a great color. Sorry. I don't have an Anya purse. Next up on my list is the only iPhone that's actually been released in 2020, and that is the iPhone SE 2020. I have it here in product red. It's a very nice phone. Some people are gonna balk at the fact that I say that it's one of the best phones of the year because it's basically the iPhone 8 with new internals and some other slight differences, but this is an iPhone that costs $400 to start. It's always very popular to go after Apple and their prices, but in recent years, Apple has put together a lineup of phones and other devices that really are much more reasonably priced and are still pretty much on par with the much more expensive iPhone Pro line, et cetera, et cetera. Up until the recent iPad uh, Air, release, it was the only new device that had Touch ID on it, but the new iPad Air has Touch ID. Uh, it's got thicker bezels, it's got a lower resolution screen, it's an older design, but for the majority of people, this is probably the iPhone that you should think about getting. Uh, and, but if you, want it, if you want a slightly more feature-rich iPhone, you can go with the iPhone 11 here, this is still my go-to iPhone at this moment, but that came out in 2019 and we still don't have the iPhone 12 yet. But the iPhone SE is pretty much everything that you could possibly want out of an iPhone, except for a headphone jack, uh, and at a price that Apple has never approached before. So this is a phone that the majority of people out there can buy and enjoy and not have to worry about paying $60 a month for. The next phone I don't actually have on me. I don't have the phone yet, although I have seen the phone, I have played with the phone, I did have its previous model, the Pixel 4a, which is a $350 phone. The Pixel 4a is probably the best phone that Google has released. And Google, I think, has found their spot in the marketplace in that sort of like low to mid-range uh, where they got all the good features. The, Pixels, the Pixel 4a still has what is probably best-in-class photography camera, not video camera, but photography camera, and that you can get a camera of that quality for $350 is pretty insane because it's just... It's just the best camera that you can get on a smartphone. So if you have you know, a, a young one that's interested in photography, if you yourself just wanna have a, have a less expensive phone but still get great photos, uh, then the Pixel 4a is a no-brainer. It's an absolute no-brainer. And uh, much like the, you know, the, the budget option that I gave, $250 for the TCL, that's a great phone. The camera on the Pixel 4a is what sets it apart from all the rest of those sub $400 phones and makes it really something special worth considering. I'll have more when I get one, I'll, I'll do a full review, but that's, that's what you need to know about the Pixel 4a. Last phone I'm gonna talk about, the phone that is my favorite so far this year, or at least the phone that I have kept in my pocket for longer than any other phone this year, is the LG V60. LG gets crapped on all the time. I don't understand why. You know, big YouTubers snub their noses at LG. Uh, nobody really pays much attention to them, but quietly over the past couple of years, LG has been improving their phones, improving their operating system, improving the skin that they put on top of Android. And they've been doing some pretty cool stuff on top of all that. I mean, first off, the LG V60 still has a, the quad DAC. 32-bit audio, 
with <laughs> a headphone jack, a headphone jack. You just don't find that in the world anymore. So that to me, that's always going to sway me because I am an audiophile, I guess. I, I love to listen to music and I love great headphones. So this gives me the opportunity to listen to great wireless headphones as well as great wired headphones. Amazing. Imagine that. It's a great feature. I'm going to do a full video on that feature so that you can understand how and why it works and why it matters. But that's just number one. Number two, size and the screen. It's a very beautiful phone. Or a lot of people say that Samsung has the best OLED screens. LG is no slouch when it comes to OLED screens. And this screen is really fantastic over and above so many others. This screen is bright, it's crisp, and everything looks good on it. So I've got no problems saying that this is on par with the best screens out there. It's fast, it's snappy, Snapdragon 865 chip in there with the 5G, because that's what all the phones have this year, the 5G. It doesn't have the feature that so many people seem to insist on this year, but I don't really understand why. It doesn't have 120 hertz refresh rate. That to me is not that big a deal. People say that it matters quite a bit when you're scrolling, but I, I don't know. I, I, I'm scrolling and this doesn't seem like it's, you know, scraping my eyes off or anything. It's a very, very good phone, very good screen. 1080p, not quad HD, not anything like that. Just a solid screen. But what sets the LG V60 apart from other phones this year? And the LG Wing is the next step forward for LG. That's coming out most likely later this year. The thing that really separates the LG from everything else is that you get this. LG's dual screen case. So you plug it in, you turn on the dual screen, and suddenly, you've got two screens. You've got two screens, and you can play games. You can do all kinds of interesting, fun things. There are so many options that you can get into when you're using this dual screen. For one, you can have, say, Google Chrome open, and then you can have YouTube open on the next page, and so you can be watching YouTube. If you're looking at reviews and such, if maybe cameras, maybe you're looking for a camera, maybe maybe you're thinking about getting a camera, then you can go and then just slide up and check out how much that camera is on Amazon. So you don't have to switch back and forth between apps. You don't have to do any of those things. It's not the, I mean, it's not a dual screen the way that most people like to think of dual screens, but it is a case. It gives you always on display here in the front and then you open it up and it has two screens. And the thing that really makes this compelling over and above any of the other phones that I've talked about in terms of bang for the buck or value or whatever you want to talk about. This phone with the dual screen case, $900. $900 for this plus this really transformative accessory. To me, that makes the LG V60 uh, just about the best deal in smartphones that you can possibly get this year, uh, or at least the most functionality for the least money. I, I love this phone. It's just one of the, sometimes phones just sort of work for you. And this one just works for me. It might work for you, but if you want all of the power, all of the features, headphone jack, plus dual screen, the LG V60 is the way to go. So those are my top five phones so far in 2020. Uh, if you follow the channel, you're probably not surprised by a lot of these. Maybe you are. I don't know. I don't know. But let me know what your top five are down in the comments below or what phone you're still waiting on in 2020 to be the number one on your list or to round out that list for you. Let's talk down in the comments below. We'll have a boisterous discussion. Anyway, thanks once again for being here. My name's Jason, sometimes known as the JTL. This is painfully honest tech. Tech, so honest it hurts. Until the next time, I'm out.